Hi, I'm Chris from Idaho. Please like my story and subscribe to my channel. I never had a happy and joyful childhood. From an early age, I had to fight for the attention of my mom, who completely ignored me and loved my older sister, Rose, more than anyone in the world. Well, of course, my sister was better than me in all parameters of a perfect daughter. The best student in school, city competitions winner, and she looked like a living Barbie doll. I envied her so much. And why is life so unfair? Someone gets both beauty and intelligence, and me, I get a pug nose and a short temper. Once our school conducted a survey, which of the students is the most popular and adored? And what do you think? The first place on the list was taken, of course, by Rose. Mom was just over the moon, hugging and kissing her golden child. Then she looked at me skeptically and asked about my results. I didn't know what to answer and just stood there. But then our happy Rose rattled off that I was second to last on the list. And the last was my classmate Tom, a quiet guy with huge braces. He had a horrible lisp because of them, like he always had food in his mouth, so no one ever talked to him. And I was ahead of him by just one spot. Yeah, that was my resounding success. When Mom stepped out, Rose started laughing out loud and saying that I was the dumbest and the ugliest girl in the world. Yes, yes, I can't argue. My older sister was better than me at everything and always one step ahead. We even had birthdays in the same month and hers was a day earlier. Every year we celebrated them together on Rosa's birthday, of course. Once mom even forgot to give me a present as if she only had one daughter. When my grandmother came to visit, she supported my mom and also praised my beloved older sister. And I felt like a waste of space, like all the women in my family hated me. Now, my dad is a different story. We always spent a lot of time together. When my mom and grandma ignored me or scolded me for mistakes, he always gently comforted and supported me. We went to the cinema or an amusement park where I stuffed my face with cotton candy. Those were the times, the best moments of my life. But then my dad left us and went to Australia. He promised to take me with him and I waited for him for days on end, but he didn't ever come back. He also changed his phone number. I completely closed up and began to snap at my mom when she tried to talk to me and support me. Baby, don't be sad. You have me, Rose, and Grandma. We're with you. It's all your fault. Dad left because of you. It would be better if you left instead of him and never returned. I screamed at my mom and ran into my room, slamming the door loudly. After some time, my mom actually left us. She explained her leaving by the fact that she found a well-paying job in a neighboring city. She said that after dad left, she had to bring in a lot more money into the house to support Rose and me, so that we could all have the best things and blah, blah, blah. But I knew that she decided to organize her personal life and had a boyfriend there. And I, being stupid and ugly, was of course in her way. I couldn't understand why she didn't take her beloved Rose with her. All in all, we are now living with my grandma, who, however, was not much different than my mom. She loved Rose more than me, and I remained an outcast in my family again, just like with mom. Everything was the same at school. No one wanted to be friends with me, and Rose was the most popular girl. Once I accidentally bumped into my classmate, I didn't see him entering the cafeteria. I didn't have time to respond and apologize. He immediately yelled that I was blind, grabbed my lunch tray, and put it upside down on my head like a hat. You should have seen my face and hair. It was terrible. I looked like a scarecrow. Everyone in the cafeteria was laughing, even the waitstaff. And of course, the loudest of all was my sister Rose. I dropped the tray, flew out of the cafeteria like a bullet, and hid under the stairs. It was quiet and dark there, and I burst out crying. What is wrong with me? Why are other kids all normal and I'm all over the place? And then I felt a hand on my shoulder. I screamed out, scared. Who's there? I know self-defense. Yeah, my dad taught me. The light went on in the closet, and I saw Tom, the same classmate with terrible braces. He said that this was his spot. It's where he hides from seniors who beat him up. But he's glad I'm here, and there's enough space for two. We sat in silence for a while, and I calmed down. Tom helped me fix my face and hair, and then I asked, Why are people so mean, cruel, and cold-hearted? It isn't really going to be like this for the rest of our lives? Tom shrugged and replied, Maybe we should support each other and go out somewhere together. I loved this idea so much, 
and we went out from under the stairs, happily smiling and laughing loudly, as if we didn't care about all those people who bullied us for so long. For the first time in my life, I had a real friend. Tom and I started hanging out together and standing up for each other when someone tried to hurt us. Once in the eighth grade, we had to go to the museum with the most boring teacher in the world. To chase away my friend's despair, I started to make faces, mimicking the boar, whom we had to listen to for several hours. Tom couldn't help but laugh. The teacher frowned and asked Tom if he wanted to say something. You're an idiot, said Tom, who didn't see it coming himself. And of course, he was immediately sent to detention and didn't go to the museum. When he was taken out, I stood up and looked at the teacher angrily. Did you want to add something, Chris? asked the teacher. Yes, I do. You are an idiot. You're all idiots here. I blurted out quickly, and in a few minutes, I found myself sitting next to Tom. He greeted me with a smile and said, I was sure you'd be here very soon. You can't last a minute without me. And he was absolutely right. In a couple of minutes, Tom came up with a brilliant plan, not to waste all day in detention. He suggested we sneak out to the amusement park, the one where I spent so much time with my dad, and we followed through with this plan. What a day it was. We went on the rides and Tom bought me cotton candy, just like Dad used to when I was a kid. I was thanking life for sending me a friend like this. When we got back to school, we were immediately sent to the principal's office where we saw my grandma and Tom's parents. And we heard so much about ourselves, I want to cry every time I remember it. Tom, this is so unlike you. You used to be a good and diligent boy. You're going downhill, Tom's parents wailed. My grandmother authoritatively stated, This is all Chris, I know. Such a trick is in her style, she can confuse anyone. But it was my plan. Tom stood up for me, Chris had nothing to do with it. But no one listened to him, and at the end of the day they punished only me. I didn't want to talk to anyone and was very angry with my grandmother. Couldn't she have supported me and believed me at least once in her life? When we returned home, I threw a huge scandal and sobbed loudly. Nobody loved me, neither my grandma nor my mom, who almost never came home. Everyone loved Rose, and only Dad was on my side, but he disappeared and betrayed me too. I ran to my room, started to crash everything, stumbled and fell, hitting my head really hard. Rose came running at the sound of me falling. She looked at me all frightened and began to examine my head. I asked my sister why she decided to take care of me now. I love you, you foolish little girl. You're my family. Forgive me for being arrogant before. I thought about it a lot and realized that you don't deserve to be treated like that, sis. I'd like to get to know you better and start over. Tears poured down my face. But this time they were tears of happiness. Rose started to ask me about my life and whether I had friends. When she found out about Tom, she started joking that he was my boyfriend. My eyes rounded. I made a cuckoo sign, laughed, and asked her not to bring it up again because Tom is my best friend. Since that day, my relationship with Rose has changed dramatically. She began to help me with my studies, and I improved my grades, and then went on to senior classes with no problem, as one of the best students. Then one day, something happened that knocked me off my stride. My dad called me. He suddenly remembered he had daughters. He said he missed Rose and I and brought us tickets to Australia. He wanted us to stay there for a while. Rose flat out refused to go, and I flew alone. What a shock it was when Dad met me at the airport with a baby in his arms. Meet your brother, Alan. Dad introduced me to my new relative, carefully watching my reaction. To say I was shocked would be an understatement. It turned out my dad had another family. I wanted to escape this situation, go back on the plane, but there was no turning back, and I was stuck here for a whole month, and it would have dragged on for an excruciating long time if it wasn't for Tom. We talked on Skype for hours every day, and the days just flew by. In one of the conversations, Tom said that he now had a girlfriend. I wasn't surprised at all. Over the last year, he kind of straightened up, got bulked up in the gym, and took off his terrible braces. And I was very intrigued and happy for my friend. When I returned from Australia, we arranged a meeting, and Tom promised to introduce me to the mysterious stranger. And here I had another gut punch waiting for me. He was dating Rose. It was like a thunderbolt from the blue. Rose had stolen my best friend, and now I was alone again. You traitors! I screamed loudly. Didn't let them explain anything, and I ran home. The events developed rapidly. All of a sudden, out of a clear sky, my mom showed up. Did she remember about us? At the same time, the school was supposed to hold an annual end-of-the-year party. 
Rose and Tom were going together. And me? Suddenly a classmate invited me. And this invitation brightened up my bad mood a little. Mom brought Rose and me very beautiful cocktail dresses and Rose got a red one and I got a white one. I liked my new image so much that I even started talking to my mom about being less of a grump. But before the party, I had another disappointment coming. My companion didn't come to pick me up. And I was sitting by the front door watching the spectacular Rose and Tom checking themselves in the mirror before leaving. Oh, how great they looked together. They invited me to go with them, but I couldn't handle it and burst into tears. Did they really think that I wanted to be a third wheel? I ran out of the house and went straight to the park where Dad and I used to walk when I was little. It was late and no one was there. I sat down on the bench and all of a sudden it started to rain. Great, exactly what I needed. Why is my life so terrible? And then I felt a warm-hearted hug and an umbrella opened over my head. It was Grandma. She'd quietly followed me. Grandma, why does no one love me? Dad left and now he doesn't need me. He has another child. You and Mom love Rose. Even Tom chose her. Dear child, it's not as obvious as you think. Your dad didn't notice Rose at all as a child. He devoted all his time to you. It hurt her and she was terribly jealous of you. To ease Rose's pain, your mother and I praised her. Perhaps it was unfair to you, but adults make mistakes too. Yes, your dad left, but not from you. He's still your dad. Sometimes in life it just happens so. Me, your mom, and Rose love you very much, no matter what you think. Your mom really went to work so that you don't lack anything. Yes, things don't always go smoothly. Yes, we fight and don't understand each other. But no family is perfect. And people close to you are the greatest value. And I understood everything. And I think at that moment I really matured. For the first time in many years, I felt truly happy and loved. Meanwhile, Mom, Rose, and Tom were standing under a tree nearby. We all hugged and then my sister, my best friend, and I went to this party. I danced till dawn and met my future boyfriend there. But that's a different story.